going on, Jerome's? So the Senior Bowl is upon us, and we're going to be picking it and grinning and going through a couple of guys who are performing well in Mobile that we got some draft crushes on. But one of those spots is the center position. Now, we've always been a firm believer that you have to build in the trenches. That's something why the Vikings have to completely revamp their defensive line. But even though the offensive line is good to go you got Darisaw and O'Neal on the outside I believe in Reisner he should be resigned they did resign Garrett Bradbury I think that Ed Ingram could develop into something but Bradbury has been a bone of contention for a while and first round pick back in the day and the Grim Reacher it's when the Vikings were in their outside zone era so after Adrian Peterson they're just like okay we got to start going horizontal uh, we got we got to start getting these lighter uh, offensive linemen fleet who can get across the face of defenders and get out there wide zone all, all that good stuff and uh, Bradbury was exhibit a of that is like mama I can change him hey he can build up an ass he hey he can build up an anchor uh, and then he'll be able to hold his own but even though he's greatly improved uh, under new uh, the new regime and offensive line coach Chris Cooper, I, formerly he was the worst uh, graded PFF center in the league. But don't let good be the enemy of great. And even though Bradbury got himself a contract extension last off season, there is zero goose egg. DeAndre Russell guaranteed money in the back end of his deal, and his four point nine million dollar base salary is not guaranteed until the third day of the new league year. So. If the Vikings want to make a move, if the Vikings want to revamp things, if the Vikings want to have more attitude up front and more of an anchor up front, now would be the time to do it because I, I like Garrett Bradbury, but is he going to be the guy, as he he's getting older as well, is he going to be the guy who's going to reset the line of scrimmage and really set things up for the run game? Is he going to be the guy that keeps that quick interior pressure out of Kirk Cousins or whoever the quarterback is going to be uh, out of their lap? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. A long story longer, enter Jackson Powers Johnson, who it's the name of a dude from like a Nicholas Sparks novel, man, Jackson Powers Johnson, and then something tragic happens, probably in North Carolina. That's a Nicholas Sparks novel. I know way too much about that. Anyways, uh, the, the pride of Oregon. Yes, one-year starter, one-year wonder uh, down at the Senior Bowl, lighting dudes up already. It, it's something beautiful to see, and I have an absolute, I got a center crush. Let's talk about Jackson Powers Johnson today. Background, 21 years young, true junior, 6'3", 320, all about that ass, T-H-I-C-C, -C, thick. Uh, yes, only 13 career starts at center, uh, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, he is a former four-star recruit from Draper, Utah, uh, was a star high school wrestler, which is something something that I love, I, I, I need. I, I need that in in offensive and defensive linemen, especially interior guys, because as a wrestler, I mean, cutting weight, you learn how to suffer. Uh, also, you learn how to play with leverage, which is extremely important no matter uh, what size you are. So all of that, and also you learn tenacity, I love it, man. Uh, he was a backup in Oregon for two seasons. Uh, he even started the 2021 Alamo Bowl against Oklahoma on the defensive line. He had two tackles, by the way. Uh, and you could say, well, if JPJ is so good, how come he wasn't starting Oregon? I mean, Oregon's offensive line was pretty damn good last year. Alex Forsyth at center. He was a draft pick by the Broncos. Also, TJ Bass uh, was in the mix as a guard. So, I mean, it's not like there was a bunch of slappy starting over him. It wasn't like that, man. But 2023, I mean, things got going, man. So he's he was a starting center uh, for Dan Lanning, snapping to Bo Nix, also paving the way for Bucky Irving, former Gopher, as well as Jordan James to combine for nearly 2,000 yards and 22 touchdowns on the ground. And it was great, man. Like Remington Award, unanimous All-American, probably the best center that – uh, college football scene in a long time. 90.6 PFF pass blocking grade allowed one pressure and zero goose egg. DeAndre Russell sacks. Now, before you get carried away, part of that is the function of the Oregon offense, and that's why Bo Nix has a lot of question marks because that ball is coming out quick. That ball is coming out short. Uh, we're talking about bubble screens. We're talking about slants. We're talking about you know 6.8 uh, dot for Bo Nix. So take all that with a grain of salt. That's why him at the Senior Bowl – it, it, it's so huge. So you're in one on one spots against tier one competition, although it's not like Oregon uh, was playing Little Sisters of the Poor all season. But uh, it, it's in more of an NFL style offense this week. Uh, a lot of more traditional five, seven step drops, a lot more under center as well. So, I mean, this week is going to be big for uh, JPJ, but he's already out there just dominating fools, man. I, I love it. And I feel like. 
his draft stock is only going to rise, even though, yes, he's got one year of tape. But once he gets to the combine and puts on a freak show, uh, I think that yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're going to the moon, baby. But uh, he did spearhead the number two offense in the country, uh, 531.4 yards per game. They were number one in passing. They were top ten in rushing. Uh, has an immovable anchor. Like He has got that ass. And also, even though he's a little bit larger, he does have nimble feet. He can block a gap or zone. And, and everyone – Always looks at Oregon through the years like, oh, they're a finesse team. Oh, they're spread it out, whatever. No. I mean, Oregon, like even going back to like Chip Kelly, like Oregon is a power running team. Like they want to run inside zone. They want to run gap. They want want to run counter. And that's exactly what they do, man. Like Oregon, I don't know. Maybe it's the maybe it's the uniforms. Everyone thinks that Oregon is finesse. No, Oregon will punch you right in the face. And that's what JPGA brings to you, man. Also, solid lateral movement can get second level. So it's not a complete trade-off where sometimes you have this powerful center, but they're a bit of a plotter. They can't really get across the face of defensive linemen. They can't really get second level. I, they can't really do a lot, a lot of stuff. Whereas guys like Bradbury can do all those things, but if you single them up one-on-one uh, against a nose tackle, think things don't work out too well. Mm. Uh, now with JPJ, he does play a little bit upright, uh, but that's technique that that's going to have to have to be worked on. Uh, and that's coaching. And also that comes down to experience. You know, like I said, only 13 career starts at center. Uh, he is raw, uh, but he's young. He just turned 21 uh, a couple days ago at the end of January. Uh, but he's impressive and he's very moldable. And I think that he certainly has uh, like a pro bowl caliber upside and NFL comp. Like it will give it. He, he, he looks like a heavier Creed Humphrey, and Creed was uh, like a freak show athlete coming out of Oklahoma, second-round pick by the Chiefs, already become one of the best centers in the game. Just think about that, but a little bit better of an ass, a little bit better of an anchor, man, and I'm down to clown for it. Now, what's interesting is that so center is still going to be undervalued, uh, interior line in general. Uh, so 11 seems a little bit too rich for JPJ. And, of course, Gar- oh, but Garrett Bradbury was a first-round pick, and that didn't work out, so don't take another center again. Okay, sure. Uh, and, yes, I fully understand that you're betting on a one-year wonder. You're betting on a young kid. You're betting on a dude who hopefully is going to develop. Uh, but... I mean, what what more do you want? You, you have a guy who could absolutely become one of the best centers in the game, a guy that could solidify your offensive line for many years to come, and you wouldn't have to worry uh, about that quick interior pressure in your quarterback slap. You won't have to worry about your center being shot-putted uh, back into your QB or, or the running back. Uh, but – also, you know, the fact that he's ha- go- going to be having himself a great senior bowl week and also going to put on a show at the combine, I-, I doubt he gets to the second round. Like, I don't think he gets to 42 for the Vikings. So the Vikings are in a bit of no man's land, but also they're going to have to make a decision. Now, could it be a spot where they hang on to Bradbury for a year and then run it back with Dalton Reisner as well as uh, obviously Ed and Ingram's on his rookie deal and still draft JPJ? Just to stock up that interior offensive line, I could see that, especially if they re-sign Kirk to more than a two-year deal. But I, I got to say, man, <laughs> just put on some film of him. Just go go watch some Oregon tape. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Where I mean, yeah, you do have to take uh, the pass blocking with a grain of salt because of you know, the quick passing game at Oregon. But in the running game, dude is throwing dudes out of the club. He's getting second level. He's opening up monster gaps especially on inside zone he's really really damn impressive and frankly if the vikings came away with him in in some order hell just take about 11 f it f it f it f it no, there, there you go but your thoughts are thoughts vikings need to draft oregon center jackson powers johnson very 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 early uh, draft crush let us know in the comment section below subscribe for daily vikings takes once more the work put a little something in the venmo but to next time skull production value